think that is misunderstood, and there's a lot of people out there that want to take your money, right? And you know, some of it's justified, some of it might not be. There's some things that Google is doing to really get rid of the sort of black hat way of commanding SEO for your business or your companies or your brand. Um, so today we're talking about SEO and also Facebook ads. I will get to that. I know some of you are here for that. Um, but I want to judge my audience to see how much you know about SEO. I didn't put these little characters on here to be cute. Um, but does anyone know why I put these little characters on here? Okay, good. That means you're in the right place because that means that I'm going to go over basics today, the things you can do to your website that doesn't take a webmaster or a um, SEO expert to do. Those little characters, just so you have trivia knowledge when you're at the bar next time doing that thing, um, those little characters, Google names all of its updates for its algorithms by little cute animals. So they've done penguin, panda, pigeon. Um, they do a bunch of things and they name it that. Every time they try to get the most accurate search queries possible for you when you go on Google. So that's what that means. But let's just even start out. What is SEO? Because some of you probably don't even know what SEO stands for. I mean, several years ago, I'm, it was a 90s band, you know? Don't go chasing you, websites. <laughs> but uh, SEO is search engine optimization. And what that means is you're trying to get your business or your brand to rank the highest possible rank on the Google page. Because of show of hands, how many people, <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm out of view. How many people, when they search on Google, do you actually go to the very bottom and click on the two a lot of the times? A lot of times because you're probably driving, right? You kind of get your thumb to push it while you're trying to make that right turn. But ranking on page one of Google is so, so very important these days. Just like um, I was talking earlier before the presentation starts, last night's a great example. My wife and I were trying to find somewhere to eat for the kids. We have picky eaters as kids. And we Googled restaurants in the area we were at. And Google popped up, and all the reviews popped up. There was pictures associated with it. So we knew exactly where to go, exactly what they had on their menu, and exactly what the atmosphere was, and exactly if they had TV to watch Monday Night Football. So uh, there's some powerful things out there with Google. So imagine this. What if Google disappeared. What if this little guy right here disappeared? What would happen to your everyday life and what would happen to internet traffic in general? Well, it happened once. Let's see if anyone recognizes this. This is War of the Worlds, and this is when um, Orson Welles, the famous movie director of Citizen Kane, did a radio broadcast. He was famous in the radio world before he went over to film, and he did this little radio broadcast, and people thought it was real. They thought aliens had invaded the Earth, and people panicked and started, you know, getting their canned goods and going in the tornado shelter. I think the same thing would happen to Google as well. If Google went down, people would start panicking. So, when Google came back up, we'll see, on 2013, it suffered an outage for five minutes when it came back up. <laughs> Experts and Google said that internet traffic, people on the web dropped by 40%. And that was in 2013. Now Yahoo's dead, a lot of the, the little search engines are dead. So. Internet traffic would probably be by, by 50, 60 percent. That is a huge, huge impact. So when Google dies, internet traffic dies. So if you're not ranking on Google, you're not getting your free advertising when people are searching for a place to go to fix their cars, to get their air conditioning fixed maybe, to get a social media consultant. If you're not ranking, then your business could be dying, just like the internet traffic dropping. So Google is very, very powerful. And that's why SEO, search engine optimization, 
is also very powerful as well. So today I'm going to walk through five areas that you can concentrate in with your business to help your ranking on Google. And I will asterisk this saying that I'm not a webmaster, I'm not a web consultant or builder, and I will say that these are things that we can all do that doesn't take someone that can code, that is an SEO expert. These are things that you could probably go on your website and look to see if your webmaster's doing or that your company's doing to improve your ranking on Google. So I'll start off with keyword research. And I will warn you, this is gonna be a little bit different than some of my presentations where I jump on the tables and dance around and things like that. This is gonna be a lot of me giving you information. You're probably gonna to have to take some notes and go back to your webmaster and say, are we doing this? Is our company you know, creating this on the web? Um, it's not complicated, but you probably wanna be you know, knowledgeable when you go back to your business to see if it's being done. Can we share your slides with you? Yeah, I'll give it to Aaron and Ryan afterwards. We'll put that on there. And I'm also filming this in case you wanna have my um, audio with the slides as well. So, um, But keyword research. First off, what's a keyword? Well, that's what you want when your customers search your business in words to rank on Google. So what I'm talking about is when someone searches air conditioning uh, repair in Dallas. That would be a keyword. Ford dealership in Carrollton. That would be your keywords that people are searching for. So that is how people are searching the web and that's what Google is capitalizing on. People put in these keywords hoping for an outcome. We hope the outcome is your business, right? Well, that's where SEO comes in. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some keywords that are probably gonna be really important for you and your business to capitalize on. And when I'm talking about keywords, how you can utilize this in your business is that you need to infuse these keywords on your website internally and um, externally. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but let's talk a little bit about some of the keywords that you should be noticing and that you should be accounting for when it's your business. First off, long tail keywords. These are more of your niche keywords. And there's a study that was put out a long time ago in Wired Magazine, there's a book about it. Long tail, and you look at the search algorithms, the long tail would be way down here where you have your niche businesses, not just you know air conditioning. It would be um, Freon in your air conditioning um, to get my air conditioning running in Dallas. You know type, that would be your niche keywords. It's usually phrases that are three words or more. So long tail is very important because that definitely helps with local SEO because a lot of times this long tail keyword will be geographic locations where they're searching for. A lot of people, of course, they're not gonna search for a car dealership and not put in the city that they're looking in, right? So that would be your long tail. So a lot of that is geography. So you need to make sure you have some of these keywords on your website to talk about where your business is located and how you operate and the scope of your business. Two, informational. We don't search really anymore by putting in specifics. We ask Google, and voice is becoming very, very powerful as well, how do you change your plumbing in a you know, bathroom? And then you Google and it shows you steps and steps, so you might be a hardware store, you wanna sell those parts. So um, things like, um, how do I uh, buy uh, tires for my car? That would be informational. So what would help with this type of keyword is having a blog, would be having video content on your website that relates to your business. So if you're a plumber, having simple tips of how to unplug a drain, you might be losing business in the short term, but when people continue to go to your, your website for tips and tricks of how to fix their own plumbing for the simple stuff, when their plumbing really, really is having problems, they're gonna to come to you because they trust you with all that content. So that would be informational keywords and informational content you have on your website. And we call that content marketing, and that's really, really my specialty that I help businesses with and the school district with is content marketing. 
Um, so that is informing your customer with great enriched keywords and content. And the last one would be transactional because a lot of people also search buying bedspreads um, for a king size bed. So buying or um, how to purchase, those would be keywords that you might want to have in your website because that's how people search. And those are called transactional keywords. So these three right here are your top three important types of keywords you need to see in your content on your website. Video, stories, articles, uh, links, to make people come to your website through searching on Google. And I would say by the year 2020, 21, a lot of experts saying that 50, 60% of search will be through voice. So how are people going to talk? How are people going to communicate with their Alexa or their Google Home? How are they gonna speak? How does it fit into these categories? So that's why I recommend every business to sit down, take 30 minutes to an hour, get with your team or do it yourself, brainstorm every key word that your customers might search for your business, your organization, or your service for. What are every possible way they could search for your business? Are they gonna use Dallas, Carrollton, Farmers Branch in the search terms? Are they gonna use plumbing? Are they gonna use lawyer? Are they gonna use banking? Are they gonna use financial investing? Think of all the different ways people are gonna go on Google and search for you. So really what it boils down to is you need to know your customer because you need to think like your customer. So some of the ways these people, when they're sitting down in front of Google or when they have their phone out, when they're in a store or searching you know, for the, a great store, think of these couple topics right here of how your customer is searching. First off, how would a new customer that has no clue that you exist <coughs> find your business? <clears throat> think of all the key words that they might find. If you're a plumbing business, you know, leaky faucet, uh, plumbers in Dallas, um, clogged drains. Think of all the key words that new customers would be able to find you. Number two, are there going to be different search terms for the different types of audiences you have? In Carrollton Farmers Branch, we have different demographics that make up our school. Of course, we have the Caucasian, Asian, African American, Indian, Asian Indian. We allow for them to find content in different ways because this group might be interested in a school having STEM technology in the classroom. Another one might want uh, fine arts. So really we look at our audiences, we build audience personas and think of what that person is, how they interact, and what their problems are that might drive them to your business. So someone moving into the area might be a persona. New people that move into Dallas, are they gonna be looking for furniture? Are they gonna be looking for a new bank to bank with in their neighborhood? So think of well as they would search for your different audience personas. And then specific helper words. Helper words are really sort of the wouldn't necessarily call them adjectives, but they really are just how are you going to deeply describe to get a more narrow search when you're searching. A lot of that will be, like I said, where they live. Carrollton, Farmers Branch, Dallas, Addison. Some of this might be um, specific. I hate to use this term, but if they wouldn't search for a lawyer, they want to search for a divorce lawyer, right? So they want to be very specific. So you need to really think of helper words that would narrow down your search that you can capitalize on and be on that top ranking on those pages in the Dallas area. And don't forget about synonyms. Lawyer, attorney. Um, I don't know if you want to say tradesman, plumber, or auto technician, or auto services. There's some different um, things that you need to look at, and it might not be the way you're calling it, but people in different areas call things different things. 
A laundry mat is called a wash and dry other places in, in the uh, country. So if you own a laundry mat, you don't want to just put laundry mat as some of your key words that you put on your website. You might want to put wash and dry. So there's some things you need to think about when you're building out your keywords. What are some of those that are relatable keywords that you can match to the ones that you're building? So I'm gonna give you some tricks to help you out that Google and some other sites give for free that you can take advantage of to build your keyword list. And we'll get to how you're gonna use these keywords in a minute, but it's really important to have a list of these so you can start embedding them on your website. So what are some tricks that you can use to come up with some of these keywords? Google suggests, has anyone ever typed in the Google search bar and it gives you a whole list of things you might be searching for? Well, there you go. Type in what business you have. Let's say auto parts. Now look at all the different popular ways people have searched for auto parts in the last 24 hours. You can use that to your advantage. Type in your business in this search bar. You'll be amazed what comes up. Auto parts near me, auto parts store, warehouse, auto parts online. They want to skip the whole process altogether. They don't even want to talk to anyone. They want to buy their parts directly to them. Auto parts Dallas, Texas, auto parts near me now. That probably means they're stranded on the side of the road, right? <laughs> so uh, think of the different things that people might name things, the way they're going to be searching. This is a powerful tool because Google is collecting all the data that you need for free and giving it to you for free. These are the most popular searches, and I just put in auto parts. Think of uh, lawyers or restaurants, Italian, think of all the different things that could come up. You know, best spaghetti in Dallas, you might not be using that on your website. So think of all the keywords using Google Suggest. That's just right there in the search bar. Another one that populates at the bottom of Google, if you ever get down to the bottom of the page, is relatable searches. So I put in Auto Parts Dallas, Texas, and these are what Google suggests you might also search under. So you might want to steal some of these keywords to put on your website. So you can see they're getting a little bit specific with brand names, brand loyalty. Um, even more specific, we were talking about that long tail, used Lexus parts. So start thinking about some of that things. What could be your niche market that no one else in the Dallas area is really capitalizing on? Because to tell you the truth, it is really, really, really hard, especially for specific industries, to rank high on Google. You have to really find your niches and find the people that you can get that sort of fruit that's hanging there that people are searching for these things and Google can definitely help you. There's also a web page, I don't know if anyone knows Neil Patel. He's like this famous entrepreneur guy, but he has a free website called Uber Suggest. You need to Google it because it's on his website. It's like forward slash, all those different things, but it's called <coughs> Uber Suggest. And you type in any keyword you want to put there and it gives you suggestions but it also gives you green lights and red lights of easier things to rank for and harder things to rank for. Because some of the times you might not want to bog down your site with, if you're a local toy shop, you might not want to put, you know, just toy store. You know, it, because probably, well, not anymore, but Toys R Us might have had that, or of course Walmart, Target. So you need to really narrow it down and look for some of those greens that can really help you out and really get that niche market. So this is called Uber Suggest. It works out pretty well. It also tells you how many people have searched for that keyword in the last month. So that'll give you a good indication of what people are searching for. But it also narrows it down of if you want to pay for that keyword, how much it might cost from Google, because you can also pay to play, which I'll talk about in the Facebook ads in just a second. But um, Uber Suggest really helps really narrow down and figure out what's really going to be beneficial to your business. Does it use geography? Because I know, like, especially on, on, on Pepper Click and Cost Per Click, Geography has a lot to do yes, with how, it does. how much of Especially for local niche businesses. I don't know if he narrows it down. There are some somewhat cheap things you can do per month that really narrow it down to your local that might be anywhere from 15 to $20 a month that are beneficial. Um, but I don't know if he narrows down specifically. I know he does it by country, but I don't know if he has something further down that really narrows that down. That's a good question. He probably will eventually have that because, like you said, local SEO is getting very, very popular. So. All right, next, on-page SEO. This is how you structure your site. 
It's called on-page SEO. You need to look at it externally to what the public sees and internally for what's going on behind the scenes because that's where some of your coding is going to come in. Luckily, there's an easy way to get some of that coding and an easier way to develop that so you don't have to sit there and code all day. But some of the things you need to really focus on for the outside of your website, search engine friendly URLs. You don't know how many, especially in the education world, how many websites I go to and you click on a link on their first page and it goes to www.cfeisd forward slash 12568910112138 abc123 dot whatever and it, you can't have that on your website. You need to be very specific with your URLs. So if someone's on your auto part website and they click on Lexus parts, your URL should be www.autoparts.com forward slash Lexus parts. You need to be very careful because not only does a human not understand that, <laughs> Google does not understand that. Google can't track. <coughs> Because what Google is all about now is finding the best possible website for your search query. So if people are typing in Lexus parts, they're not going to find your website if you didn't name using your keyword list that we're generating, that brainstorming list, if you don't use that in your URL. So you need to really think and talk with your webmaster. It's easy to change when you develop that page originally to change that URL, but you need to have URLs that relate to what the page is about and utilize those keywords that we were talking about. So that's the first thing you can ask your webmaster about. Internal navigation. I know it's very, very popular these days to when you go to the opening of a page, it has this massive video and it's like moving and all these different parts are flying by and things like that. Those are real popular, you know, those big, huge videos. All the college websites are using all that. You need to be very, very careful because if you don't really have a skilled, skilled webmaster, Google is gonna get very, very lost about what your website's about and where they can go on the website. So if you have this massive video that plays and you really have no menu options up there, and they have to watch the whole video before your menu pops up, Google is not going to waste the time to crawl your website if they can't find your menu to get to your other pages. So you need to be very, very careful about that. You need to make it simple for people to find your content. So if you're, I keep going back to the auto parts, but if you're an auto parts dealer, you have your website, you want to have your categories, you know, service, parts, used cars, new cars. So you want to have those different categories subbed out so Google knows what to search for. So any of your websites, you have this massive intro, or you have this really hard to find menu, you're going to get dinged by Google because they're not going to find anything on your page. Site load speed, they are starting to crack down on this big time with Google. So large, large picture, pictures that you haven't um, compressed, or if your caching's not there to um, get rid of some of the things that are on your website, then you're gonna be in some trouble. And ask your webmaster how you can increase because for every um, one second that you shave off when someone types in your web address and it pops up, for every second you shave off, that's 7% more you're gonna jump up at the Google rankings. So that's pretty powerful. So think about load time. Some ways you can get around or have quicker load time is where your website is stored at. Is the server local? That would probably be the best thing if you're a really reliable company that your server's local. What that means is where your website is stored on. If not, I would definitely go with Amazon Web Services or one of the bigger companies to house your product because, or Cloudflare, because they divvy up the speeds and they have different pipelines where your website's going out to. So it really, really helps. But also, we always say that pictures are great, pictures are awesome, they are. It drives people to your website, but you really need to make sure that your graphic designer is when they're in Photoshop and doing these pictures and editing the pictures, that they are saving for web. It's a, don't just hit file, save, JPEG. Hit file, save for web. It makes your pictures kilobytes instead of megabytes. If you have a lot of pictures on your website, that adds up. 
So ask your graphic designer, are they loading the pictures on your website for save for web? It's gonna not, I mean, it's gonna, your speed, your load time is gonna drop down significantly if you get rid of all those large pictures on there. And if you're gonna embed video, it's probably a good idea to embed Vimeo or YouTube instead of putting the video directly on the web page because that's gonna cause some problems loading as well. And then we talked about this, about content marketing, creating awesome content. If you don't have a blog on your website, it might be a great idea to start one because people are out there searching for things to solve their problems. That's the main thing people are going on Google for. They wanna solve their problems. They wanna know how to get something done quickly and if that happens to be your business, that's great. But a lot of times they're searching for things that are very, very simple, which might lead to a sale for you. But you really need to have content on there that drives people into your website. And then that way people will link to your website, and we'll talk about that in just a second, but links are very, very powerful when it comes to SEO as well. So having awesome content. And one of the biggest, and if you're not writing anything down this whole day, you need to write down this next slide, because the most important thing that Google is dinging on right now and penalizing you for not having, mobile responsive website. If you get on your phone and you have to scroll back and forth to read it, it doesn't condense down, your menu doesn't turn into a hamburger, or things like that, you need to really talk with your webmaster. Because 52.4% of searches right now on the web are done through phones. Google knows this. That's why if your site is not mobile responsive, they're not gonna rank you at the top of the list because people are not going to be wanting to go to your website if they can't look at it on your phone. And did you know that 70% of searches from the Hispanic market is done with a smartphone? So in this area, that's very, very powerful. There's a higher Hispanic population than some of the areas in the United States. So if 70% of people that are Hispanic are searching with their phones, and you really cater to that demographic, or of course everyone wants customers, you need to have a mobile responsive website. Google knows this. If you're not mobile responsive, you are pretty much dead to the world. We, that's the whole reason why CFP went and changed their site. We went with a company and they said it was mobile responsive, it wasn't and it ruined our rankings. It ruined our, the way people got to our website. It sort of just crashed. So we had to build it all from scratch ourselves because we weren't gonna deal with any other company anymore. <laughs> Went on there and that was the first priority, mobile responsive. Okay, real quick, behind the scenes. This is something to talk to your webmaster about, but titles, your title tags, make sure you're using those keywords that you brainstormed in your titles of your content, the title of your pages. These are links on your website. Your webmaster will know what this means, but you need to make sure that your links are linking to a good page. You don't wanna have any broken links on your website because Google will ding you. So if you have a link that says, check out this awesome video about our um, service station, click on it and it says, URL cannot be found. Google's gonna ding you and they're gonna rank you lower on the search. So make sure all of your broken links are there. And don't worry about all this stuff, I'm gonna give you a great next slide that's gonna clear up all this. Image alt tags, tell your graphic designer when they're saving the picture, put alt tags in there. Also on your website, you'll be able to put alt tags. What an alt tag is, it describes your picture and you're able to put your keywords embedded inside the picture. It's not visible to the audience, but it is visible to search engines. So all of your pictures on your website can be searched as well. If someone's searching for um, a clean auto parts store and you have a picture that says cleanest auto parts store in town but it's hidden behind it, then people will find that by your alt tags and your images. Yeah, that's also a good place for locations, right? Because yeah. like for us, like if we do a job in Addison or do a job in Dallas, we, on our pictures on our website, we want to put you know, exactly in Dallas because yes. that's another keyword that they'll pick up on. Yes, done in our business at the Addison location, you know, whatever that, whatever that picture is about, you know. We fixed this 2013 Lexus convertible at our Addison, you know, park store. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely location would work out you know, really well for local businesses on this image alt. 
This is all about your headlines. Make sure that you have at least one H1 headline, and what that means is one of the big headlines. H1 is a tag by WordPress. I'll talk about this in just a second. Don't worry, you don't have to code at all. And then a meta description. This is behind the scenes of your website where it sort of talks to Google, and this describes what's on your page. So meta description is very, very important. These are actually the top five things you need to tell your webmaster they need to have on your website. So the good thing about this is, with all these, most, about 99% of the things out there do it for you. Especially if you have a WordPress site, they're going to do this for you. But when you're putting your title in here, you need to make sure that is utilizing the keywords, right, that we brainstormed. Your content down here needs to utilize the keywords that you're brainstorming. Right here, this button on your Word, if you do use WordPress, this right here, paragraph would be the normal text. If you drop that down, it says H1, H2, H3. H1 is gonna be your big headline that Google really looks for. Don't put that in your whole, so here's another thing. Don't try to trick Google. So don't make a page that is just all H1 that says, Auto Parts Dallas, Auto Parts Allison. I, they, they know, they're smart. They have a bunch of Stanford grads working for them, you know, making a lot of money. They will find this stuff out. That's why these black hat SEO companies that are telling you to do certain things, you need to be really careful of that because Google finds a way to find out about all this stuff. So they call it keyword stuffing. If you stuff a bunch of keywords into your stuff, you're gonna be ranking on page 50 rather than on page one. So you need to be very careful about the way you put keywords into your pages. But this is all done right here. So all this typed in right here using these different buttons, it's real easy, it's just like Word, then that translates into the code on your page. However, you do need to have your webmaster look to make sure that code is translating to what you meant. So that's where they would come in. And I would recommend this page right here, SEO by Yoast. Yoast is one of the most famous plugins you can get on your website. And this guy right here developed this program where you can go in and manipulate or change every one of the criteria for those things I talked about to make it the best possible search query for Google. All it is is a lifetime, $79 to get this. It's on your WordPress site or whatever site you have, and it goes through and it checks one by one. Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you put this? Did you do your meta description? And you can type in all this stuff, and it creates the code for you. You can even change the URL to what you want it to, so it's very, very powerful. I would definitely get this for your business if you don't have it. Yoast. It's this, you'll see, it's this big picture, an animated picture of him. We use it on all of our sites that we have. It really walks you through the steps before you post to your content out on your website. It really puts it out there in the best possible SEO platform. Okay, link building, I'll go through this really quick. You wanna have a lot of outside websites linking to your website. And what that means is links are like votes. Anytime someone links to your website, that is voting for your business, or that's voting a recommendation for your company. So you don't want to stuff links and just create all these fake websites in, you know, and link back to your website. You need to have legitimate websites that are linking to your business. That's why a blog is so good, because when you put those blog articles out there, people are more willing to share those on social media, link them on their website, and they'll come back to your website. So have credible links that people are going back to your page. So some of the things you can do, of course, like I said, have awesome content. You can do it yourself. Do a lot of how-to videos, create videos of just like, here's our staff at H&H &H Auto Parts, and just have a video, but link back to your webpage on YouTube. So video content can be very powerful. So YouTube is a different website. For every video you post in the, in the description of your video, make sure you have the website and link it back to your website. So that's a point for your website when it links back. Guest post on blogs. If you're a lawyer in Dallas and maybe you wanna write for the uh, Dallas Bar Association blog, 
And at the end of the article, say this article was written by Johnny Smith, and here's my website. Link back to your website anytime that you do that. And this is sort of powerful too. You can go out to companies that have broken links on their website or broken <coughs> recommendations of businesses. And if you find these broken links, you could say, hey, I noticed that you're recommending this plumber that went out of business a year ago. When I click on it, their website's down. Do you mind, do you think we can talk and maybe you could put my business there instead? And then they will start recommending your business and all those, so if you go out, it takes some research, you, know, you don't <coughs> gain anything by not hustling, but if you go out and find some of these websites that might be related to your business and look for their broken links, like a financial blog, if they're, you know, this is, a blog about stock investing at the very end you put your you know this is links broken about you know some getting some investing advice in Dallas do you mind if you put my business there so look for those broken links and I'll give a plug to the Metricus Chamber sponsorship building anytime you become a sponsor in an organization thing like that most of the time they have a, they talk about you on their website or they talk about events happening and they'll link back to your website so the more people you sponsor, the more people that you, you know, give content to, or um, they'll usually give you a shout out on their website, or at least link and a sponsor page, so that's an extra link going back to your website from a credible organization in the community. So it builds on your ranking. And then of course, social media, I don't know what happened to VL, but social media, you need to do be on there. I know it's an extra thing you have to do. You have to be on there. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and link back to your website. Link good content. Link back to that stuff that you're providing to the community. Now, the keywords and stuff, the things that you're talking about, um, like you know, Google and stuff on your website, mm -hmm. uh, those same principles apply for your social media posts, right? They do, because just like, just like anything your website, Google searches Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and if you notice sometimes businesses, their Twitter will rank before their business website because they're more active on Twitter than being active and doing good stuff on their website. So it's, it's pretty crazy what you'll see out there from social media that gets ranked pretty high on page one. So it's amazing what social media can do. It just gives you points back to your website. But like I mentioned before, beware the penguin. This was the update they did that if you stuff links, if you're making uh, fraudulent websites and sitting in the back, if you're telling and buying links, if an SEO person comes in and says, hey, this is how you build SEO. I take your website and I give this out to a bunch of websites and I pay them to put your link on their website, don't do it. Google's smart, they're gonna penalize you. This new update, they will penalize for any bought links, any types of link stuffing, any type of things like that. I've already talked about this, be on social media. It provides so many links back to your website and it builds your content. And then I'll go through this very quickly, local SEO, because this is becoming more and more powerful as we talk about SEO. Because people are shopping online, but you know what? They're also shopping in their community. They're also using Google to find these niche businesses the businesses they can't buy online, like lawyers, things like that. So local SEO is becoming very, very powerful. And some of the five factors that go into local SEO that you might need to worry about when you are building your website or putting content on your website. Proximity. So this is not necessarily about where the person lives. This is about where they pull out their phone or pull out their laptop and they're searching on Google with Google does the GPS thing and all that kind of stuff like that. They know exactly where you're at when you're searching. They will rank higher businesses that you are searching for depending on what community, what uh, business. You might live in Dallas and you might put in, you know, you might need to buy a gift for your nephew that lives in Dallas but you're on a trip in Ohio and you put in, you know, best toy stores um, for, I don't know, Power Rangers, I know that's not cool anymore, but so, um, but it's gonna put up Ohio stuff before it brings up the Dallas stuff, because that's where you're at at the current moment. Because nowadays people want it fast, right? So it's gonna put it wherever you're at. Physical address, this talks about your address you have on your web page. You need to make sure that it's the correct address for one, and then it's associated with the type of cities that people are gonna be searching with, right? And it needs to be consistent. It needs to be consistent. It needs to be the same exact address and business name 
on your website, on Google Maps, on Yelp, on Foursquare, on where it has to be the same on every one. Because if Google searches and you're Joe's Pizza here, and then another place you're Joe's Pizza and Pasta, it's not going to associate those. So it's going to be problems for your SEO ranking. It goes to your business listings, right? Like your directory listings? Like yes, it can, yes, it will that too. So and then proper GMB categories, that means Google My Business. And you can sign up for Google My Business by going to google.com forward slash business. You need to sign up your business and claim your business on Google Maps and on Google Business. Because that way you can upload pictures of your community, your business, things like that that are on there. And that way you can see what other people are putting on there. You can look at the reviews. You can see all that stuff. So you need to sign up for that account. Um, NAP consistency, what that means is, I already talked about it, name, address, phone. Across every platform, it needs to be the same so Google knows what's talking. Then domain authority, the same thing. Are other businesses or other websites in your community linking back to you? Is Carrollton Chatter on Facebook saying you're the best car dealership to go to? Linking back to your website. Is the library saying that you should check out this reading um, workshop at whatever your community college? Linking back. So domain authority, people linking back to your website. And it's very important that you set up accounts on Yelp and Google Business, the two most powerful ones, um, to really have your business out there so you can put your own pictures, your own description in your store, your store hours, the correct address, everything. So you can see Google, it's so very powerful because a lot of people search businesses now by just putting in restaurants on their Google map and things pop up. Or they need to go to an ATM, ATM's in my area, it pops up. You know, they're not gonna go to a bank that has one star, right, that says I put my ATM card in there and it took my ATM card. Or there was a skimmer on the ATM. So you need to really have an account and really know what's going on out there. So that's what I mean. Claim and optimize your Google business account and your Yelp account. And I'll give you those websites in case you want to copy those down of how to claim your business on those two big powerful platforms. The most powerful thing is that Google's allowing now on Google Maps is to put your own pictures and your own video associated with your drop pin on there. So not only can users put photos on there, that's another thing. If someone really, really had a good experience with your company, say, hey, why don't you take a picture of your car that we buffed out the dent and put it on Google Maps to say that you had it and write a great review for me. The more reviews you have, reviews are very, very powerful. They're gonna go back to your website. Google's gonna rank you higher if you have better reviews than the other customers or businesses that are out there. So encourage people to write reviews for you. Encourage people to take pictures and load it on their social media, but also on these websites as well. The more stuff you have out there, the more likely people are gonna search. Because I know I really don't go to a hotel unless I look at the pictures on Google Map now. To look how clean the rooms are, to see if it has a swimming pool for my kids, what kind of condition the swimming pool's in. Those pictures are powerful. You might even put pictures of your staff, so when people walk up, like a car dealership, when they walk up, hey, you're the guy in Google Maps. Yeah, I wanna work with you. So it, it, it can be a very big deal for you to have this content out there. Yeah. Uh, when people are rating on, on Google, how do they, I mean, rate you on Google, how do they do that? So basically, I'll go back. Basically, what you can do now is, you have, the thing is you have to have a Google, a Gmail account to be able to do this, but most people do nowadays. So if they have an experience, they can go on there and write a review, or even if they click on the map, on Google Maps and you search for a business, you can click on there, you can write a review and you can star it, how many stars you give it and things like that. So it's just, it's just like going on Foursquare or Yelp and, you know, or, you know, doing whatever, writing a review in your local newspaper, it's the same sort of thing. You just, they're giving the power to the community now. Now, all review platforms are important, but Google's obviously the most, right? I mean, yeah. but like, you know, Facebook's just changed theirs to where it's basically a one star or a five star, it's the recommendation. Yeah, so I, I will say though that 
I was going to talk about this a little today. I don't know how much time we have, and I apologize. But um, Facebook has really changed their platform of the way they're laying out things. Um, I have a whole video on YouTube if you want to watch it. But the way they're ranking things now, that reviews are closer to the top of the list now because they want to come become more of a community rather than just a sort of sharing, you know, pictures and things like that. They want to be able to have a one-stop shop. They want to be the next Google. They want to be the next search engine. They want to be the next thing. So if you notice in Google recently, they've been recommending events that your friends are at if you're in the area. Or my friend went to this, your friend went to this restaurant last week if you're, you happen to be near there. And they'll, you know, reviews are becoming popular on Facebook. So you don't want to discount those. But of course, the most powerful is going to be Google because when people are searching for stuff, like once they know what they want, they're going to go to Google Maps, right, to find out where it's located at. So it's going to be a big deterrent if you have a one-star review or um, your address isn't correct on there, your phone number's not correct, your website's not correct. So it, it, it is very, very powerful. And that's pretty much the basic. There's some powerful stuff you can be, to do on SEO. And I'm not the, the be-all, end-all expert. I'm more of a marketer, but I know things that are working for us marketing-wise some simple things that you can do, and usually businesses don't even look at any of this stuff before they go on to the more powerful things that people are offering them through paid stuff. So be beneficial to look through this and do this kind of stuff. So if you have any questions about any of this stuff or anything um, that you want to ask me, it's my email address. Um, that's where I am on Twitter. I'm also on some other platforms, but you can have a conversation with me a little bit easier. Uh, Wheeler CFP. This is my website for the next month, but I'll have a link on there going to my new website. But I have tips and tricks not only for education, um, social media, and marketing, but also for everything else.